Hello, welcome back. We are building a movie app with the best coding practices and tools out there. In previous articles, data sources, repositories and use case, we have created many classes and instantiated them directly in main.dart. In this article, we will see what is dependency injection, why we need DI and how can we introduce DI in Flutter application. Before we understand DI, let's see what is a dependency first. In very simple terms, when a class A needs class B to perform its operations, then class A is dependent on class B and class B acts as a dependency for class A. Let's see what, it, what is dependency and what is dependent in our code so far. API client depends on client. Movie Remote Data Source depends on API Client. Movie Repository depends on Movie Remote Data Source. Get Trending depends on Movie Repository. For every use case call, you will have to instantiate all its dependencies like this. This is an overhead and a waste of productive hours for any developer. Not only this is a waste of time, but it might also lead to creating some objects multiple times at multiple places which can lead to consume more memory. How good it will be if we can rely on some separate dependency provider to provide us with the correct type of dependency whenever required. This dependency provider will also maintain lazy initializations as well as single instances throughout the application. There are many plugins in Flutter created by the open source contributors for the exact same purpose. We will use the Get It plugin in this series. Open PuffSpec.yml Add the dependency of Get It and run Flutter pub get command. In the DI folder, create a new file get underscore it dot dart. Import the get underscore it library and get the static instance of get it in a variable. For the rest of the code in the application, we will now use get it instance. In our second video, we made network calls. So let's start with that first. Add this code in get underscore it dot dart to initialize client from HTTP package. Here, client tells get it what type of object to register. The function is the factory function that returns the type client. And this actually initializes the data source. This is the way we tell get it what to initialize. Register lazy singleton will initialize the instance of client when it is first used in the application. Now, API client depends on client. So let's add that to in get underscore it dot dot. Here, get instance method in API client get instance resolves the dependency for API client. As we have asked get it to initialize client for us, so we rely on get it instance to provide client to API client instance. Movie remote data source depends on API client, so let's add that in get underscore it dot dot. Till now, I have shown only the register lazy singleton method of get it, but there are other methods too. We will see them in the coming videos. Since the client, API client and movie remote data source are used throughout the application, so they should have only one instance throughout the application. Let's add remaining instances. Open get underscore it dot dot and declare the other four use cases. All use cases are dependent on movie repository that will be resolved by get it. Movie repository depends on movie remote data source. Again, that will be resolved by get it. We are done with adding all the objects in get underscore it dot dot. Let's use them in main.dart. Open main.dart and instead of a lot of initializations we did in the previous articles, this time only use get trending from get instance now. With the help of pedantic package, you can use unawaited that will allow the app to not wait for get it initialization 
to happen before launching its first frame. Import get underscore it file that we created. Use unawaited and call the init method to initialize get it. Give the type of instance you need like we did get trending here. Now run the app and again there is no difference in the output. You will see a list of trending movies in the console. So get it injects the dependency required for us. Before I finish this video, I wanted to mention there is a GitHub repo for this whole series. There is a branch created for each video with familiar name. In case you need assistance, you can refer the code. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you in learning something or other, then your like will help me a lot. I would love to hear back from you. If you are new to my channel, do subscribe and toggle on the notifications so that you never miss the future tutorials.